Okay, so once you're all fully synchronized and uh, you've come to the dashboard, there's a couple of things that I would recommend um, that you look into. So the first thing, I'll just jump into the settings here. And uh, what we'll do is we will disable quick sync. Um, so I've already done that whereby you can, uh, it, it's got enable now, um, but it might be worthwhile disabling it. Um, that will do two things. Number one, uh, reduce the number or, or the uploads of your, of your, um, of your internet connection, uh, because you're, you're constantly uploading that, you know, that, that quick sync file, the, um, the torrent, uh, that will disable. The other thing that you will also notice is that your hard drive uh, or your, your drive's capacity will significantly decrease because when you have QuickSync on, um, you, you, all, you keep not only a copy of the blockchain in one folder, but also a copy of the torrent file um, and its download uh, in another folder. So that basically just doubles your uh, um, the, the disk usage. So if you disable the QuickSync, that should reduce your um, your, uh, yeah, the disk usage um, down to about, at this point in time, 44%, okay, on a one terabyte hard drive, okay. The other thing that I also did was I um, uh, enabled dark mode, um, which is over here, uh, so that gives me a nice interface with a, with a darker background rather than the, than the, the white. Um, the other thing that I would also recommend that you do is the first thing that you should be doing uh, when you when you see your dashboard is to enable the Electrum server. Now, once you've enabled the Electrum server, that'll take a little bit. That, that'll take quite a while to um, uh, to, to index. Uh, it's going to add an additional amount of data uh, to your to your hard drive, uh, or sorry, to your to your drive. And that will um, basically create an index of about, mm, I think it's about 70 to 80 gigabytes of space um, that we'll, uh, we will use to query um, it, when we connect our, our Electrum wallet to it. So the other thing that I wanted to make mention, so that, that will take you know, something like you know, a couple of days to, to enable. Um, so just be patient with that. The other things that I wanted to show you is some of these settings here. Um, now the disk usage at the moment, I've got you know 44% with an Electrum server running. Um, so that should be something where you are probably going to sit, hopefully. Uh, if not, that would be on a one terabyte hard drive. If you have Quick Sync still installed, that'll, that'll sit at 72. There's nothing wrong with that, um, but just be wary that if, if it is, you know, if you do want to reduce your disk usage, then you can disable quick sync. Now the CPU usage, nothing to really, um, you know, sort of see here, except for the fact that if you are installing certain things, you should see a spike in there. Um, if it's just running, then it should purr away nicely at, you know, a, a lower percentage. But if you're installing things, that's when the CPU would, you, you would expect it to go higher. The RAM, again, you might expect it to go higher when uh, things are being installed, but it'll sit nicely there as well. Um, now, the temperature. If you are noticing your, your Raspberry Pi, um, the temperatures start to, to go a bit too high, uh, I would recommend that you, you know, um, look into why that is. Uh, generally, though, a Flerk case will sit in that 40 uh, to 50, well, no, in, in the 40s uh, uh, degrees Celsius, that's the probably what you'll see with a flirt case. If you don't have a flirt case, then that could be, you know, in the 50s or 60s. Um, but the thing that you really want to watch out for is uh, the 80, or in, in the 70s and 80s is when you're starting to go really, really warm. Um, so I would just be, be, be wary of uh, of this percentage. Oh, sorry, of this of this temperature, and uh, just make sure that you are, you know, keeping an eye on it and and making sure that it is a reasonable um, temperature that you're expecting to see. Um, 
Anything after 80, as I mentioned earlier, the performance of the uh, device itself will start to degrade. Um, and after 80, I think you're soon going to be in the realms of starting a fire. So just, you might want to disconnect that. Just a um, hot tip for you there. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll go through some of the settings. Um, Uh, I'll talk about uh, the upgrading in a separate video. I think that just deserves a a, um, a separate video of how to upgrade your MyNode. Um, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. This is where you can enter your product key if you do want the access to premium features um, where you can put in your product key um, and yeah, you don't have to use uh, Community Edition. Uh, it'll show you your device type, your local IP. Now, in here as well with the status, this is all very, very, uh, I, I guess, mm, for a better word, geeky. Um, but you, if you go into, for example, open net data, um, you will see uh, uh, nice graphs and nice, you know, uh, diagrams and or, you know, tables and charts and so forth. Um, and that basically shows you how your, uh, your MyNode is going and the system itself is going um, and you can explore more there's a little sidebar here how your disks are going how's your ram going the network usage all that sort of fun stuff in a nice graphical format it is pretty detailed um, and it's a pretty cool little website that you can use to monitor um, your, your my node so that's quite cool uh, same thing with glances however this is a little bit less uh, i guess user friendly or i don't know like it, i mean uh, it's basically showing the same sort of things. It's just a nice little um, interface of what the processes are going through, like what processes are on for your MyNode um, and, you know, usage statistics, so on and so forth. Very similar, uh, but just different. Uh, this is where you'll find the Linux terminal itself. So you will be able to um, log into your... Uh, your, your MyNode, and if, for example, you are asked to troubleshoot, or if you, you know, want to type a command in, then you can do so here. So, for example, Bitcoin CLI get connection count um, should work, and it'll show you how many um, uh, 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 nodes that your Bitcoin core is connected to. You can also do get blockchain info, um, and so that'll show you the, the chain tip, so on, so forth. Um, yeah. Uh, there's all these plenty of commands, like for example, if you want to find out your disk usage, DF. Um, so, for example, this here is your hard drive, which is mounted at MNT HDD. Uh, that's got 960 gigs or one terabyte. And um, yeah, this is how much is used. This is how much is available. And then you can also see your SD card, which I used a 16 gigabyte drive. Um, so let me just see which one is that. I think it's uh, dev root. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of uh, where th how much the SD card is using up as well. Um, so yeah, that's got a 16 gigs um, on it and I've used what? 5.6 gigs and I've got available 8. So that's how you, how you can read some of that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's your command line um, interface if you ever need to. Uh, and then you can just exit out of that by closing the, the browser window. Okay. Uh, the change log, um, <clears throat> this is quite cool. Uh, I, I think you should read it um, to see the progression of my node of when it first came out versus you know what it's added along the way so you understand what the stuff or, or what the amount of work that's gone into building something like this um, Taylor I think has done a fantastic job so have a read of the change log I'll talk a little bit more about this change log uh, when we do the upgrade section because it is quite important um, that we understand what is being installed onto this device. Here is where we can change our password. So if you look into our home um, 
it will have a warning here. You appear to be using the default password. You should change it to something else on the settings page. So this is where you can change your default password. So the current password is Bolt and you can change it to whatever you need to. And that will change for my node, uh, the password to SSH and password for apps as well like uh, Ryber Lightning. So um, that is uh, something that you will want to do uh, and that I recommend that you you change that password such that nobody else uh, can get access to your node. Okay. This shows the services that are up. Obviously, my quick sync is uh, disabled, but you've got my node, um, you've got the Tor status, you've got Bitcoin status, LND, uh, the whole works of what's what's going on with my um, my node. It's all just written here. Dark mode, obviously, I've got that enabled. This is where you can. Uh, I guess reboot the device, uh, shut down the device and download any log files. Um, so when you are shutting it down, please, please use the shutdown device. Don't just unplug uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, from the power. It's not the best case. It's like, I mean, it's not going to hurt it 99% uh, of the time probably, but you know, it's like saying, okay, well, um, you know, when you plug a USB drive out, uh, it's kind of like that. So just be wary that you prob it's probably advised that you do shut down the device properly um, if you do need to, and you reboot the device with that button as well. Okay. Firewall. Um, so this shows you where, uh, well, what is allowed um, onto, what, what, what internet traffic is allowed and from where. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, how, how it kind of, yeah, um, and, and kind of what ports everything is running on. So that's some just information for you um, to see where traffic is allowed and where it's coming from. Uh, you can reset those settings as well. Now, quick sync, I've touched on a fair bit, so I won't go into that. This is where you go into Bitcoin and reset the blockchain, rescan the blockchain and re-index the blockchain. Uh, these are things that are just going to take a little bit of time. Uh, Lightning, this is where you want to, if you want to delete your wallet, you can do that. Uh, Electrum server, um, yeah, uh, this is basically, you know, where you can reset the data for, for the Electrum server, so on, so forth. Now, with Bitcoin and Bitcoin Tor, uh, and Lightning over Tor, those nodes are by default over Tor, so any connections are uh, incoming and outgoing over um, for your Bitcoin network node itself, it will be done through Tor and that enhances privacy. Um, you can turn that off if you so wish by, you know, uh, ticking that and you can turn that off. Uh, this is where, you know, that net data monitoring service, you can disable that. Um, this is more of the advanced features and the developer features. Uh, if you just need to, you know, reset things or uh, reinstall applications, you can do those sorts of things as well. Okay, So that pretty much takes us through the entire settings. There's a lot there um, that we can, you know, there's a lot there to dive into. So um, yeah, whilst you're, uh, you know, um, installing the Electrum server, you can, you can go uh, browse through that, but just be patient especially when things are installing, um, just click it once and just let it sit there. Uh, monitor the, the CPU, monitor the RAM, monitor the temperatures and monitor the disk usage. Um, that's what those, you know, the, these parameters are there for. So it's really for you to just have a look whilst you're installing and just be patient with things, um, when, especially when you're installing. So just, you know, feel free to browse around and have a look at things, um, but just be mindful not to keep pumping and clicking and, you know, going all out. Just do things one at a time in a nice controlled environment. And so you can sort of understand what's going on uh, and the logs that get presented if something does go wrong are a little bit clearer.